It's time for another round of Hot GPT. Our topic today is what did we actually learn from the early 2000s tech bubble? Okay, ready to go? Start generating. Now, why, why, why do I want to talk about this? Well, because we have, as our guest on Thursday, somebody who lived through that tech bubble, Tom Conrad. He was at pets.com, one of the sort of poster childs, as it were, of the cray cray times in the late 90s, early 2000s. I was there for that. I was a baby venture capitalist investing in companies in Latin America. The one that was like the real, oof, the one, the toughie was a company called Star Media. Google that company that my firm invested in and made like 800 times its money or something crazy. And then it went public. It was public. You know, that's why the, the valuation was so high. And then over time, it just went back down to zero. Then we invested in a company called Patagon, which was the sort of the first big fintech in Latin America. That one we made a crazy return on, massive return. But what was insane about it is we actually sold it to Banco Santander in Spain. And after announcing sale, the market crashed and we were so worried they were gonna pull their offer, which was more than $500 million. They did not. So we were rushing to close that deal. And then they bought it and it turned out to be basically useless to them. So that was kind of nuts. And then there was a company called Mercado Libre. You may have heard of Mercado Libre because I am currently the spokesperson, brand ambassador for one of their divisions, Mercado Ads. So you've been following what we're doing there. You know, you've seen that. And Mercado Libre was a company my firm invested in. And then they raised a bunch of money right before the crash. And that was enough to get them through. And now they're one of the most valuable companies in the world. So the point being here is that there were lots of winners and losers. It was highly unpredictable. It was a crazy time where there were no metrics. People were investing in things that were completely untied to real value. It was just a crazy time. So what do we learn? And did we actually learn it? That's what I wanna talk about today. So I wanna start, I got five things for you, five things that you know I think we were supposed to have learned from the tech bubble of 2099 when the, the old NASDAQ fell from around 5,000 to around 1,300. The first one was focus on sustainable growth. So it was all about a land grab. Now, if you weren't there, let me take you back to the early 2000s. The internet, was like, it, there were, you didn't really, you couldn't really buy anything. There was no e-commerce. There was not that much media. It was kind of like email mostly. And then with the first web browsers, this whole thing took off. And it was like, we could someday sell things over the internet. We could get our news from the internet. Wow, that's so revolutionary, right? Like people just went crazy. And so a million startups got formed. And at that time, it was really expensive to start a company. Like to start a company just cost, you know, millions of dollars really to get a website up because it was expensive to get the engineers and the tech and all the hardware. It was just a different time. There was no cloud storage, right? And people just built these companies with the idea that like, we have to have something out there and get as much of a the land, the real estate as we can. And then we'll figure out how to make money later on because obviously the internet's the future. Sounds like AI, right? And so anyway, that's what they did. And it was there was a time when people would value companies based on eyeballs, like how many people visited the site, which is, you know, it's very early stage, let's say. It's not a great way to figure out if a company's gonna make money. Lots of people go to websites and pay nothing. And so that was what was happening. And when the whole bubble burst, all of a sudden everybody was like, we have to be profitable tomorrow. Let's cut costs, let's figure out a revenue model. And it was a massive reframe and shift in the way people were building their businesses. Kind of like what happened now in 21, 22, when you had all these companies that were just like, you know, highly valued, spending all this money, being very focused on growth. And then they realized, oh, the bubble has popped. We may not be able to get more capital. We got to become profitable as soon as possible. So, History repeats itself. Did we learn anything? Not really. I'd say we didn't. That is the venture capital cycle. It's like people have frothy times, then they have very difficult times, and they have to tighten their belts. So that is just the nature of the beast. I don't think that would change. I don't think people are going to change the way they do things. Like, look at AI. 
right? All right, that is number one. We'll come back for two through five right after the break. FOMO. FOMO. Okay, so what did we learn from the bubble of early 2000s? Well, another thing we learned was to have realistic valuations. In other words, so much of the bubble, I mean, a bubble by definition is when valuations get way out of control. And as I said, people were valuing companies based on eyeballs and other really stupid metrics. They were also taking companies public and then these public companies would like sort of have a massive pop. And then everybody was jumping into these stocks and it was super, super, super crazy. And then it all crashed and everybody lost all their money. I remember a colleague of mine, I was a banker at the time, put his entire bonus into internet stocks and he lost it all. I remember investing in the public shares of a company called El Sitio. El Sitio was the, uh, was the ticker. It was a Latin American kind of tech portal, like Yahoo style. And I think I bought it at like 30 and then it went down to like basically pennies per share. I started calling it El Sitio. <laughs> and then they did a reverse stock uh, sort of split and it was just a disaster. I lost all my money. So yeah, that was a time where we realized valuations were completely unconnected to reality. Now, did we learn anything? Well, based on what happened the last couple of years, not really. Again, valuations got way out of control. I would say less crazy than they were 20 years ago, but still like completely ridiculous. I mean, all these, these massive rounds of VC and companies that have no future, it's ridiculous. And so we didn't learn all that much. Again, I think it's a VC thing. But come on, people, like I, I got to tell you, people who were around in 2000, a lot of them, they were much more cautious than people who didn't see the mess and have to clean it up. Number three, diversification and risk management. Never go well in an industry, right? Be diversified. And that was something that happened a lot in the early days of the Internet. A lot of consumer and media stuff. All that stuff crashed to zero. Entrepreneurs themselves didn't have revenue models. They had to learn how to diversify. They couldn't just live off VC dollars. So it was a painful transition. It was really the maturation point of the internet itself came as a result of these challenges. So that's good. Now, did we learn anything? I think we did here. You see companies now much more focused on building sustainable business models. Now, there are examples where that did not happen. NFTs are a great example of that. Just totally like, that's like an all-in bet on something. It's like, the future is here. Let's bet on it. Okay. How did that work out for you? So I think kind of we learned something here. I would say it's like, a, I'll give it a five out of 10. Better than the other two. Number four, focus on your customers. So what happened in the early 2000s is everybody was just like, how do I get VCs? How do I get VCs? Not really that worried about solving real world problems, meeting customer needs, right? It was just like a lot of things people didn't need. Did we learn anything? Well, I just mentioned NFTs. So we did not learn that much on this one. And I think this always happens. I mean, you have companies, I remember just like Tinder for dogs was something I read about in the last sort of couple of years. Do we need Tinder for dogs? No, we do not. So I think, you know, there are a lot more serious companies and the, the entrepreneurs who run these companies and start these companies now are more seasoned. So I think it is better, but clearly there are pockets where just silliness continues. And the final one, resilience and adaptability. People went through a crucible of fire in the tech burst. When that bubble burst, people were really exposed. And the businesses that got built in those years when there was a VC sort of total desert, uh, those are some of the greatest companies out there. So you think of a Facebook, you know, that came around in the mid 2000s. The market was still pretty depressed, right? There's a lot of other companies, I mean, that were that were born in 2000, 2001, or that were around before, like a Mercado Libre I mentioned, you know, they were around, but then they had to sort of make it through the tough times and look at where they are today. It's a NASDAQ 100 company. So there I do think, this is the one that I think people really learned. And I think that, you know, <laughs> you see that today, that entrepreneurs are just, they just, it's a lifestyle. People understand now what they're getting themselves into. And I think you see a lot more resilience. It's still really hard. It's 
still really hard, but you see that people are more willing to adapt. They know. All right, so that is what we learned and did not learn from the 2000s bubble. You can hear a lot more on Thursday. We're going to talk about that and many other things. So, FOMO Sapiens, see you on Thursday. And until then, take care of yourselves and patch EPT, stop generating. FOMO. FOMO Sapiens is recorded in New York City. Theme music is by Mike McGinnis and editing and post-production is by Josh Elstro. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me at FOMOSapiens.com and at PatrickMcGinnis.com. To advertise on FOMOSapiens, reach out to contact at FOMOSapiens.com.